We have a wonderful man here who we're going to spend a little bit of time thanking um, for the gift that he has been to Hope Church way before I arrived. Um, so we're just going to take some time and we'll just hope that you join with us uh, in just appreciating and honouring Nick in all. Uh, we've got people coming up and sharing things, but if be open to God. If you feel that God's speaking to you some words of encouragement for Nick, just hang on to those and we'll, we'll let you know later on how, you, how we can gather those together. So first of all, I'd like to hand over to Teresa, who comes with a message from Andy. Hiya. I stand here very apologetically. Andy's really poorly and uh, had a PCR test on Friday and it's still not come through. But he's, even without that, he's coughing and spluttering and sneezing like... Well, you've heard Andy sneeze. It's a terrifying thing, <laughs> especially in these days. So, but he's absolutely gutted that he can't be here. Gutted doesn't really... He was actually weeping this morning because he, he so wanted to be here. Uh, so I've got this message from Andy. He says, Dear Nick, I'm so gutted to not be there. Words read out are a poor substitute, I know. Teresa will do a good job, but I would, love, I would love people to see and hear the emotion I feel and not just the words. We have walked so much together as friends and elders, and I don't really have enough words to express how grateful I am to you that we could walk, how grateful I am to you that we could walk this journey together. We saw something together in Bethel way back in 2009, just before you were made an elder. And it's been a tough ride at times as we've sought to outwork that vision of a supernatural presence, a, a supernatural presence-centered community that works by honor and not control. We've walked the church through many changes like women in leadership making his presence central seeking to create unity and cohesion without controlling things some tough asks I'm so glad to have had your friendship and so glad to have had your leadership strength and your wisdom alongside as we sought to forge a way forward to pioneer something, I have come to to pioneer something. I have come to rely on that strength and wisdom, and I've really needed it over these years. You have made a big and significant contribution to us all, and it will be missed. What's very exciting is the new vision management team coming through, who carry so much pastoral heart wisdom and teaching gift and that's also part of your eldership legacy I'll say more when we meet up but massive big thanks and hugs and big thanks to Jan too for being alongside you for releasing you to the role that you've been given amongst us much love Andy Oh, wow. Uh, so now I am just going to thank you. Um, these are words on behalf of um, Mark and I. Um, and what's going to happen after this is that Nick is going to come up and share. And then we're going to, um, Mark and I are going to lay hands on him. And then we'll take some time after that to pray together for him. So Nick, you are one of the most faithful, diligent, dependable, solid, strong, wise, fun, and loving men that we know. And uh, we want to thank you for your friendship, for your encouragement, for your courage, for your prayers for us and for this family, um, and your huge faith in God. Thank you for living, modeling, and teaching us what it means to hope. Thank you for adding your strength, your gifting, and your anointing to our family for more than 12 years uh, as an elder and since you arrived in Hope. I do remember, um, for those of you who weren't here in the early days, I do remember Nick uh, coming into Hope and, and Jan and thinking, wow, 
these are incredible leaders in our midst. Uh, right from the get-go, they were trying not to be leaders, but they couldn't, they couldn't help themselves. <laughs> God, God didn't hide them for long. <laughs> and we want to thank you, Nick, for courageously running the race, for not giving up or sitting down. Uh, even when things were tough, you kept going. Uh, we want to thank you for always keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus and for diligently feeding on the truth of his word and actually sharing um, real key nuggets at key moments uh, with us. And thank you for your yes. Um, hope is a better place for your having been an elder. And uh, we look forward uh, to seeing all that God has for you and all that he does through you in this new season um, for you as you focus on bringing the kingdom of God in the NHS. And actually, we know that you're going to continue. You're not going to stop being you. You're going to keep bringing your pastoral and mentoring skills and insights and wisdom and gifting to continue to grow hope further. Um, so we love you and we are excited to keep cheering you on. So I just want to invite you to come up and you get to, uh, you get to share with us now before we lay hands on you. Come on, you cruel lot. How on earth do you expect me to speak after all that? <laughs> so, uh, thank you, thank you. It's, um, it, it's very, very humbling um, and a great privilege. And uh, I get a chance to, to speak and to, to reflect um, uh, before such lovely people. So, uh, so thank you all. Um, it's, it's always interesting, isn't it, when there's a change or a I like the word transition now. Journey used to be the word, but I've gone off journey. It's transitions at the moment. Um, but there's, there's good in those things, but there's a lot of anxiety as well, isn't there? I don't know if you love change, you love transition. There's people who just want the new thing. There's adventure around every corner. Others, I think I'm in this camp, are a lot more cautious. What exactly is going to happen? When's it going to happen? What will it be like afterwards? Um, I'm definitely one of those who likes to plan and prepare um, for change. But I have learned over the years um, that it's always a good opportunity to trust God. And I think that's where you find your peace and that's where you find your blessing. So um, if it's okay, I'd just like to share a few words. So yes, Jan Mack mentioned um, that... Uh, my Jan and I arrived in Hope in the summer of 2005, and uh, we, uh, with four kids, thank you very much, yes, and we're going to get heckled all the way through this. <laughs> so, and uh, we, we arrived in a bit of a heap, not, not really in the best shape, um, but we're so grateful to Andy and Teresa, who Andy will tell anyone that he's not a pastor, but we had more pastoral input from Andy and Teresa that eight weeks over that summer than I think we had in... Um, 16 years in our previous church, so we are very grateful. Um, and as, as John said there, that um, th there's something in you, and if it's in you and it's God, then it's going to come out. And while I did not want to step back into the role of, of leader, um, I found myself acting in a leadership capacity. Um, and so actually, it was uh, the, the summer of 2009, um, I was commissioned as an elder along with Andy, we were the first elders in Hope. And that September, we both had the privilege of going together on a leadership trip to Bethel Church in Reading. And I think what was most precious was the fact that it was me and Andy. And I could not have imagined being more different. And that was highlighted by when you're in somewhere and there's stuff coming towards you and you ask questions, you think thoughts and you have opinions and you realize all of those are different to the man who sat next to you. <laughs> Um, but what was so precious that as we spent every evening then processing, talking, discussing, hearing and drawing from one another and it was such a rich and precious time that I believe um, set hope on the journey that we're 
now enjoying and just the, the presence of God being so precious amongst us and how do we as a people make sure nothing gets in the way of that and everything facilitates that. So um, it's been a privilege to serve as an elder for the last 12 years. Um, never something that I sought out. I would always happily, you know, hide in the background. At six foot five, it's hard to hide anywhere. Um, but, you know, it's not something that I rushed towards or wanted. But there's this recognizing the call of God and just that sense of rightness. When a thought or a suggestion comes your way, it suddenly becomes solid inside you. And that's what I found. And it's, it's hard to describe the role of an elder. Um, but I felt a weight come over me with this and it's weight can sound like a burden and you know Jesus talks about take my yoke upon you for my burden is easy um, but the, the, the weight is much more that solidity that foundation stone weight do you, do you hear what I'm saying that sort of um, Jan said that when she was set in as an elder it's like being a, a, wet, a bag of wet cement or something like that there's that sort of doof and it's just that sense of being solid um, immovable you know, things can be supported and grown from that solid place. Um, and it's really something that I, I felt God gave me and, and all of us as elders um, at, uh, at that moment. And just that sense of not being blown about and not being moved. But that weight was the central part of it. What that looked like is different for each of us because it varies on our gifts and, uh, and abilities. And I fairly quickly learned that I had to be me and not someone else or what other people thought I should be or what even I thought I should be or some pastiche of the role of, a, of an elder. Um, it's, that was one of the, the foundational things that I think happened when I went to, to Bethel Church in 2009, just that it is okay for me to be me. And not only okay, it's necessary. Each of us has a, a part for us to play. Each of us has a thing that is us and no one else is us. Um, now that needs a certain amount of self-kindness, it needs a certain amount of living with weakness and insecurity, um, a certain amount of, uh, you know, being willing to let others come alongside, especially for those not great, you know, could be better places in our lives. And finding that place of security, standing firmly in the love of God, that I am who I am, I'm where I am. You know, it's what's in me, but it's because of what God has done in and through me. And, and that's part of this challenge of calling um, and realizing what's my calling is it's, it's mine, it's me, and it's pretty individual. It's not like other people's. And that can lead to misunderstanding. It can lead to disappointment. So as you look back, you can think, is everyone happy with what I've done, who I've been? Well, in one sense, you know, I hope so, but that's really irrelevant. I, I am who I am, and I've been what I've been. Um, and I, I take some, you know... I was using this word, I was chatting to John Luke, my son, and pride, you know, is, is one of those things, but I'm really pleased, you know, that I've been able to, to run the course so far and, and be true to all that I believe God has made me to be. And it's that willingness to be gracious to myself, receive God's grace for me for the times when, you know, I've not done as well as I'd hoped. Um, and it's really important that we measure that grace to others because it's so easy to be disappointed, especially in difficult times, especially in times of change, that, oh, they should do this, they should do that. But, you know, if God's gracious to us and he's teaching us to be gracious to ourselves, let's really work hard at being gracious to one another. So um, I've got a few, not really, well, I hope they're not homilies, but just some of the things I've learned to, to share if that's okay. And a lot of that is flavoured by the fact that as well as being an elder at Hope Church, I've been a full-time GP. And um, latterly, I've reduced that to three days, um, mainly for sanity. I, I call them my mental health days. People say, what do you do you know, on your days off? I just, I don't fall over. I think that's the, that's the key to that. But there's been these, you know, twin roles, two horses, I've often thought. You're sort of holding onto the reins of two horses and hoping they don't diverge paths. Um, because each role has benefited the other. There's been a lot of cross-pollination. I think I'm a better GP for my you know, Christian beliefs in my life um, as an elder. And definitely I think I brought a lot of the strengths of GP into my role as an elder. So there's been a, a strengthening of each other. But perhaps more fundamental than that, the key to doing things like this is you've got to be true to you. you I'm, I'm me wherever I am. And 
that's such a profound thing and it should be obvious thing but it's easy to feel you've got to fit in you've got to adopt you've got to you know do this in this situation that in that situation but what the kingdom of God is is you being you full of the riches and treasures of heaven and just turning up full where, wherever you are um, and just seeing that the kingdom of God is not confined, confined to buildings or organizations but clearly the challenge to riding two horses, doing two challenging roles, is, is capacity. Um, and each of us has a different capacity. Um, and it's really important not to compare yourselves, because you can look at something, how on earth do they do what they do? Well, it's not for yours to do. And neither is it for people who have often said, oh, you're so busy, you're too busy, as, as come out sometimes. You know, and I have been busy, it's a busy life. It's a busy life being a parent, um, as well as all these other roles. Um, but just being aware of that and then watching for the signs. If I'm doing the right thing, it should be life to me and life to those around me. If I'm starting to get snappy and irritable, if um, you know, those around me um, are starting to, you know, hello, what's happening? Um, then these are warning signs to listen to. And I am so grateful to my wife, Jan, and to, to my lovely family, um, who, again, have allowed me to be me. They've seen that I'm doing what I've been called to do and they've cheered me on um, in that. Because there's no one around who's done what I've done in my circle. I'm sure there are other GPs who are playing significant roles in church life, but not in, in, my, not in my world or, or connections. And so I've had to work out what's right for me to do. And really, this is mainly a plea for all of us to work out what is right for each of us to do. Um, and to draw on the strength of each other around, um, but also listening clearly to God and clearly to those around you. Because I've known a grace for this season, um, which is so profound and, uh, you know, again makes me feel humble because it's lovely to get, oh, you know, thanks Nick, you've done a great job, but the cry inside is, I don't think I've done that much, you know, but I have, but it's not because of trying so hard and trying to make it happen, it's just, it's just come out. Um, and the other thing that I really wanted to say is that sometimes we think, oh, it can't be God because you're so busy. It can't be God because you're working so hard. But I am absolutely convinced that work is part of the kingdom of God. Adam and Eve had a, con a commission to be fruitful and multiply, to fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over it. And if they, as our forebears, were given a job of work, then we shouldn't worry about work as long as it's the right work at the right time. But more recently, the role of an elder at Hope has expanded, churches um, leading the church through a time of change. Um, it, you know, it, it's, it's an important and a significant role to do, to do it well. And a GP land has uttered dramatically and <laughs> has been quite overwhelming at times. And I really now find myself in a place where I can no longer do both roles to my satisfaction. I can no longer give myself as I, as I have. And one of my key verses in, in life um, is 1 Corinthians 12, verse 32. And it says of the sons of Issachar that they understood the times and they knew what to do. Um, and there's so much that I've taken from that. One, it is reading the season and being aware of what's happening both in the natural realm and the supernatural realm. What is it that is going on in the moment? And then attached to that, what is mine to do? And some people are seers, some people see things and then they get the feeling that they should do something. Others are more able to do, but not necessarily see. So it's those two things. It's understanding the time and knowing what's yours to do. Um, and it's really important to get that right. And anything when you think about a season, obviously, is also attached to seasons change. So understanding at times means when is that time moving on to a different time. So discernment is really important. Listening to your heart, listening to God um, are essentials to avoid pitfalls of making the wrong decisions. And that discernment, it, there's so many different things we could talk about that. And I'm, I'm not going to go on for too long. But it's discerning your starting point. Where am I? Because um, you can make a choice from a place of peace, you know, knowing that your motive is out of love. Or there can be stress, anxiety, fear. Um, and it's really important to discern where are you starting from before you make big choices. But also, as I say, just recognizing the time. And then when you've decided your choice, um, just learning to lean into God, to draw on his strength, and, and to respond with some courage. 
So I'm grateful that I've been able to be myself rather than a version of what I thought or others expected. Um, and grateful to, to Andy and Theresa. I'm absolutely gutted. I spoke to Andy this morning. He, he sent me a message and I, I phoned him up. And this lovely man, as I say, we could not be more different. And uh, we, we have knocked a few lumps out of each other over the years. It's uh, fair to say. Um, I might look quiet and nice, but uh, <laughs> there's quite a few head shaking there. Okay, it's just me who thinks I'm quiet and nice. Nobody else is fooled. Um, so, but we have found a way, um, and the other elders have way. We've found a way of being ourselves and yet holding on together, and that being both, as the Bible calls, iron sharpening iron, two strong things that rub off each other, but actually find that there's a strength that comes from that, and we're better together. And so a way of mutual support and encouragement um, and to find that our differences become a strength and not just things that are tolerated. So really, really grateful for that and for this opportunity and just looking for how does this season change and how do we still bring strength, but obviously in a different role. Um, so really I just wanted to, as I reflected back on my time, just recognizing that there's this sense of being pleased, pride or what have you, I found this part of the race, and I feel I've run this part of my race um, well. And, and it's really important that each of us, one, you know that you're here for a reason. You know, you're not an afterthought, you're not an also ran, you're not just someone who's filling in a pew. You know, God has given each of us something for us to do, something for um, someone for us to be. The challenge I've found, and I'm sure you find it too, is that often that's more than you think you're capable of. It's always that stretch too far. You think, no! really um, but this is where it's a time to lean into God to trust that God is with you and you're not you know you're not going to fall apart no matter what those inner anxious voices might say but hearing father's affirmation listening to Holy Spirit about the the when and the where the how the with whom it's really important listening to Jesus's encouragement he has made a way for each of us and also just said at the beginning of, uh, earlier about self-kindness, just recognizing, hearing from Father, who has he made each of us to be? What are those treasures that he has put inside us? Um, because when we stay full, when we live from that place of knowing that we're loved, then we just need to be, and it's just watch and see the good things that happen around us. There's a certain sense in which being present is the real key to that, that if we're full of you know, past regrets or we're full of future anxiety, it can rob us of this. But if we learn to stay in that place of peace, be present in the moment, and just to say, well, I don't know what's going on, but I am who I am, and I'll be that in this situation, um, we will see so many, so many good things happen out of that place. Um, so yeah, just reading my notes here, just discover who God made, made you to be. And again, just making choices, it's just choosing because of that sense of awareness of God rather than any fear or anxiety, that selfish ambition, or even just the, the fear withdrawal that can, can sometimes cause us to make choices. The other flavor of life for me is now being a grandparent. And uh, this is a delight for so many reasons. Um, one of them is seeing these amazing, you know, little babies start and, and grow up. Perhaps a bigger delight is seeing my children then become parents and uh, just, just watching them grow. That's a delight. It's also uh, not always the easiest place to be. And I think one of the difficulties is time is not linear. I know we all have days and weeks and months and minutes and microseconds, but you know, I know exactly how I parented. You don't actually. There's things you remember. You cherry pick memories. You really do. Uh, we 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 have this rose tinted view of our, of the past. Or sadly, some people have a very, you know, black tinted view of the past. Um, but we don't know how we did it. And the days have changed. I'm so glad that my children did not have to face the things that today's children are having to face. Um, so learning as a grandparent to stand alongside, to cheer and to support, to be there when asked and to shut up when not. And, uh, and all of these skills that, uh, that I hope I'm, I'm learning all right. Because um, you have so many good things, you think, if only, you know, uh, 
Um, so yes, my, my zip is in, in good use, keeping my mouth shut. But that role as a, a, a parent to my own children and now seeing them parent their own children, their children, has also informed some of my view of the season of life for me now. And being a grandparent um, in a, a church context where I can cheer on and support, I can take a step aside from an active role in leadership and see um, a space created for new generations of leader to grow and to flourish and to do things differently to how I did because the day has changed and we need a new, a, a new leader for a new season. But giving me opportunity to stand alongside, to cheer and to encourage, to um, just whoop from the sidelines. So as I finish this season as an elder, I give myself a lot more to the needs of general practice at the moment and finding that place as a, a granddad and just growing and developing there. Um, I am looking forward to all of these elements. We're now at that stage of life where our parents are getting very elderly and frail. So there's a, a very different role. So there's a different focus to my activity. But I'm always looking to be the best me I can in whatever situation. And I think there's this phrase that I found helps me between being and doing. You know, I am who I am but that will look different in a different situation. And sometimes we can look at our behavior, our activity, and let that define who we are. But we are who we are because of the, the gifts and the, the callings that God's given us. And so just really wanting to continue to be my best self, although the role will look different. So thank you, church. It's been such a joy and a privilege, such a humbling experience. Um, and for all of us, here's to this next season of embracing change, listening to God, um, but in whatever, being our best selves, trusting God, and above all, enjoying the ride. Thank you. So we just have... Um couple of small gifts that we would like to give uh, to you. <laughs> um, just really a huge thank you, small token of our ginormous appreciation. Um, first of all, to you, Nick. So if Mark, you wanted to just hand that over, that would be amazing. Thank you. <laughs> and as Andy shared via Teresa earlier, actually, Nick would not have been able to do what he's done all these years if it hadn't been for Jan. And so we just have a wee small something for you to just say thank you so much. You're amazing. So huge thank you. Thank you so much. So Mark and I just want to lay hands on Nick now because as Nick said, um, actually there is a weight that comes on you as an elder and we actually want Nick to be released from that actually so that he can go on into what God has next in you know all things GP land um, so I'm just gonna we're just gonna lay hands on you and I've, I've written it out so I'm just gonna try and could you actually come here so I can <laughs> thank you <laughs> I can't do I can't do this and that so <laughs> yeah so Nick we honor you for the way that you have faithfully served us as an elder in hope and as you step into all that God has for you next, we release you from the spiritual authority and responsibilities that you have accepted as an elder of this church. You're a dad in this house with incredible pastoral mentoring and healing gifts. And now by the authority of Jesus Christ, we release you into your commission to continue to bring the kingdom of God in the NHS. And we affirm. <laughs> I'll start again. <laughs> we release you into your commission to continue to bring the kingdom of God into the NHS. And we affirm afresh that you are completely free to be fully Nick and to bring all that you are to Grow Hope family. Holy Spirit, right now we pray that you would baptize him afresh with power and with fire. We speak an increase in anointing 
authority, favour, influence and freedom to be the incredible leader that you have been called to be. And Father God, we pray that Nick would grow in wisdom and stature before you, God, and before his colleagues, his patients, his friends and his family. Amen. So yeah, we we just want to uh, pray for Nick now. Um, so just if I can invite the vision management team just to come and pray. Um, I think in, in these moments uh, in church life, we just we just have to mark, um, and we are so appreciative of all that Nick has poured into this family over many many years, and uh, excited as well to see what God's going to do through him in the future as well. So. Let's uh, just pray over him. Yeah. yeah, Father, we thank you for Nick and the incredible, incredible uh, gift he has been and continues to be to this family. We love his uh, quiet strength, the wisdom that he carries, uh, just the way he communicates that so well uh, to those around him. And Father, as we release him, uh, from carrying the responsibility of eldership, we also release him into uh, just that ability to continue to bring that wisdom that he carries, uh, to step alongside people, to input into their lives. And Father, we just pray that he will feel a f real liberty and uh, that as, just as you whisper in his ear that he will be, have a a ready heart to respond and just to, to pour into folk. We just so love what he carries. And as he steps into more uh, into GP land and puts his energies there, God, I just pray that there'll be a real outbreak of your kingdom in all that he touches. God, that he would be a man who influences um, the way that the NHS runs, that actually you would give him godly wisdom uh, uh, to do that so Father we just ask your blessing upon him and Father we just thank you for bringing us such an incredible man um, to our church to bless us and to be a blessing Lord and there were two words that I felt God uh, say to me as, as I was thinking of you Nick and one was legacy and the other one was the unseen and in terms of legacy, I just thank you, Father, for the way that Nick has shaped our spiritual DNA um, in, uh, in a way that has made us who we are today, Lord Jesus. And he has diligently stood by it and protected it and cherished it um, so that we can um, be an incredibly thriving, present-centered church, Lord Jesus. And I just thank you that, that, that there is a legacy um, that he has um, sown into us as a church. And Father, I thank you for the incredible wisdom and people-centered um, way that he has loved us and um, brought to meetings and brought to the ways in which we do things that, that will remain, uh, Lord, in, in our culture because of uh, what he has brought to us as a church. And for the unseen... I just felt this was really, really important, Nick. There are many things that we have seen that you've done and that you've brought, but there are many things that, you, that are unseen. And um, I just thank you for the commitment and unwavering steadfastness that he has, um, he has uh, committed to keeping our environment safe through the prayers that he's prayed, through the warfare that he has spoken, um, through the way that he has protected and guarded our environment as a church. And for the unseen hard work and, and graft that he has put in, Lord Jesus, we thank you and we honour him. And we pray that you would pay back um, tenfold all that he has given Lord in this season and for this next season we just pray a blessing uh, for him and his family uh, Lord a real releasing and a real um, a real joy Lord in this next season for him in Jesus name Amen 
Uh, Jesus, I, I thank you for Steady Treddy, God. I thank you that he, he is a man that has been such a firm foundation in Hope Church. And you know, it's, it's a foundation that hasn't just relied on his pastoral gifting, but has put, you know, apostolic leadership under strain. It has put loads of different areas of his life that he's given wholeheartedly to this church. And I just honor you for that, Nick. And we just thank you for, for what you've done. And thank you that you've got us to a place here that is strong and healthy, God. And uh, I, again, I thank you that you, you know who you are, Nick, and you, you know what God has called you to be, and you know that, that you have got to the end of this chapter and the beginning of the next one, and, and actually God's releasing you to be even more you, and understand even more of who you are, and releasing you into a, a different area and new things, but we just thank you and we honour you for what a foundation and what a strength you have been to every member of this church, every member of the leadership team, God, yeah. you have brought so much to all of us, Nick, and we just bless you and we thank you for that and we release you into exciting, fun, uh, new chapters and new things that God has in store for you. Bless you. Bless you. Yeah, Father, we just, oh, we thank you for Nick and for Jan and the, <laughs> the real blessing that they have been to all of us. I just echo all these prayers, God. Would you just pour out your blessings on them, God? I thank you that you're not just saying this is the end of something, but it's a commissioning of, of new things, Father. I thank you for the amazing, amazing things that you have planned for them in their lives, God. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Father, for the, for the change that there has been in each of us and in this church as a result of having these guys with us. And that's not something that, that changes now, but it's something that's deep down and, and is embedded in us as a community. So, Lord, we just bless you. Um, Nick, bless you, and we thank you. Um, yeah. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Father. Thank you for Nick. We thank you for Jan. We thank you for their extended family, the, the blessing that they are. And God, I pray in this season, it will be a time when they can enjoy that together. It will be a time when he's fruitful in the workplace and a time as well when he'll just be able to be a father in the house. So thank you, God. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Now we asked a couple of people uh, just to ask God for a word for Nick. So I think Anne and Teresa, is that right? Uh, just going to come and share now. Hi, Nick. <laughs> I have been asking God for you this week and God showed me a picture of uh, a sailing yacht. So... I, I actually found a picture to try and express what I felt God was saying to you. And it was a, a sailing yacht on which somebody is, is furling down some sails and putting up some more sails. And, and I did fact, ch fact check this on Google because I'm not a sailor. <laughs> um, but apparently you can use all kinds of sails uh, to increase speed, handling and performance for different weather conditions and and it just says the large sails are for going downwind small sails for upwind see all i didn't know all this it's amazing large sails are good for weak winds small sails are good for strong winds so i saw this picture that i saw you on pulling down some sails and putting up some different sails on this yacht and what i felt god say to you was it is a time to change sails um and that sails, whichever ones you're going to put up, are designed for movement. And that um, they're also designed to catch the wind. And actually, the Holy Spirit weather conditions may have changed for you a little bit. But actually, as you embark onto something new, you put some new sails up, actually, the Holy Spirit is going to fill those and they're designed to move you forward in whatever God is calling you to do. So I felt you wanted to encourage you that you have a journey with God ahead of you, so find the right sails. And uh, the wind of the Holy Spirit is continuing to blow in power to move you into God's purposes for your life that are still to come. And I just felt there's a, as you put the sails up, there is some things to come that you haven't even imagined yet but that God is going to blow on um so I just felt God say to you it's a change of sail season not a rest in the harbour season <laughs> uh, and you're going to have some sails that you've not had up before but actually God's promising you that you will love the exhilaration that it brings love it, love it. <laughs> oh, that's so 
funny. Um, I, I was in the kitchen this morning worshipping and I felt um, that it's been really stormy, hasn't it, life? Nothing we've predicted has worked out. Even this morning was a classic example. <laughs> Andy would have literally given his right arm to be here and couldn't be. And I, and, but that's been true for the last couple of years. And, and as I was just worshipping and praising God, it, it was like a little mini hurricane came in the kitchen. And I was spinning around worshipping, but I got so giddy I had to cling on to the worktop because just to stay upright rather than end up in a heap on the floor. And I thought it was so funny what Anne was saying about the sails and the wind. And I felt for you that there is this wind that it, you've always known and that always propelled you, but that there's a new... You're in this time of transition and COVID and there's things moving around by this hurricane. So there's things that have been there that he's whisked off, but there's also things he's deposited. And also felt he wanted it to be a time of rest. Um, but Jesus has got a great verse in. In John 15, he says... If you keep my commands, you'll live in my love, just as I've kept my father's commands. For I continually live nourished and empowered by his love. And it was that nourishing and empowerment, but also God is empowering you. So there's things that have been stuck in place that are going to shift. And the eldership is one of the things that shift. But it's going to look different moving ahead. So I felt all these things. I'm going to keep it brief. So I felt rest. The resources of Almighty God have, been, have always been at your disposal. And that that's only going to increase. It'll just look different. He wants to reveal more of you to himself in these coming days. Visions of him and dreams. Also dreams that you've had happening for you that you have greater freedom than you've had because your time has been so disciplined and you've worked so hard. Refreshing. There's a reconsidering of things. There's an ease in the Father's presence. He wants you to eat and feast on him and other good things. There's an ease with people. But I felt him say, don't go easy on them, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> He says, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, correct, rebuke and exhort with great patience and instruction. And I just felt him say, don't go easy on them, lad. <laughs> <laughs> There's a real steadfastness. Um, but sometimes it can get a bit stale being steadfast. I don't know about you, I felt like that in covid I've been so steadfast shopping for the last 42 years. If I have to go in another supermarket, I think I might kill somebody. And this can be a staleness with steadfastness. But that's when I felt this new wind swirling. So this new spirit, this familiar spirit, but swirling, spinning. You're going to get dizzy. He's going to reveal things around you. There's going to be a buffeting, a rearranging, a consolidating, a chucking out of ideas, a change in your theology in your head and your spirit, challenging ideas. There's also an unpacking of the concepts and your values and the truths that you know with every fibre of your being are true. And actually, you're going to get chance to expand and think and develop and pass them on. There's a time in trust in his timeliness. Um, and I felt that time's gone a bit backwards for you. So I felt like, you know, we have day and then we have night. Well, I feel like you've done the opposite. You've moved into the dark when you came up in Glasgow and you've worked both in your GP practice and in the churches you've been part of to bring the light of God. And that it's been like a dawn through the night. But I feel like now is the, is the day, the midday. Right. 
and that the light you've worked so hard to build and see created, you've done it. And there's a rest and a ease and an illumination that comes with that. Because you've, you've done all the hard graft. Well, you and Daddy God have done all the hard graft. Um, You've got to take this light to others. It's not to be stored in a cupboard or drawn out somewhere. Both old and new, God's going to show you what to do. And I just felt him say, I mean, I could have gone on for pages, but he has trusted you so much and you've done so well, Nick, with it. And I think we all, why don't we all stand up? Because I know there's loads of people here. Look, Nick, there's people that haven't been to Hope for weeks, for months. And what the reason is because you're here. And I know you all want to say your own thanks to Nick. So why don't you put your hands together uh, and just show your appreciation of this great man. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. I'll let you go and sit down now. <laughs> um, so to just, we're just going to draw to a close now. Um, as always, we believe that the power of Jesus is here to set us free, to heal. So please, if you would like us to pray for you, just come up the front and we would love to stand with you in prayer. And I just wanted to draw us back to what I said at the beginning where that, that verse that's repeated in lots of star, psalms, which was, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his love endures forever. And we've just experienced that this morning. We've given thanks to the Lord for he's good in his gift of Nick to us. But also there's the second half of that verse, but his love endures forever. And we can look forward with a hope and a vision that actually God will continue to bless us, continue to bring up uh, other Nick's alongside us um, to, to serve us as Hope Church family. So thank you very much for being here this morning. If you do have a word for Nick, um, if you do have something that you feel God's given you prophetically, it would be great. I'm sure Nick will be mobbed with people wanting to see him. Please drop it in an email to him or send him a voice message. Or if you want to send it into the office, we'll make sure that he gets it just to bless him.